takes a snap, looks it out right side. He's not going to be caught. Touchdown, Arizona Christian to who else but John Cole. Throws it over the top of the Langston defensive back, and it's going to go right into his hands. Touchdown, Arizona Christian as they win today's ball game, 40 to 37. A very pleasant good evening to you as we welcome you to the Storm Report, Episode 7 on the 8th day of November 2021. We are live from the Tower Grill on the campus of Arizona Christian University. I'm your program host, Kevin Derryberry, and we'll be joined by my co-host, Ed Cole, as well as the head coach of ACU football, now the 21-21st-ranked team in the country. Mr. Head Coach of ACU is Jeff Bowen. He'll join us on the program also on today's show Another action-packed program. Jake Farrell will join us on the program, as well as Sid turnbull Fraser. Both of those gentlemen instrumental in this come-from-behind victory over Langston on Saturday afternoon. We welcome you in. Tim Gosen, our technical producer. Mr. Cole, welcome in on this Monday night. Mr. Derryberry, Mr. Coach Bowen, good evening. How are you guys? JB. Awesome. Welcome in. Congratulations. Big win. Uh, despite the electronics issue on the ride home, it was, uh, it was a happy ride home. How pumped up were you guys to come away with a big-time victory, 40-37? to 37. Talk about, uh, you know, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat maybe a couple times over. Congratulations on the, on the most certainly big-time win. Oh, it was a great win. Uh, one of the, the best I've ever been involved with, just the flow of the game. That was a great college football game, you know. Um, lead changes seven times, tied three times, and just two teams really getting after it. And uh, really proud of our guys, the way they just stuck together and and persevered. It was a heck of a win. JB, there was a lot of different drives to, to go over, a lot of different points to look at in this game. I want to just start in that fourth quarter because there was, again, just so many points of interest here. But uh, let's take it late in the fourth quarter. Uh, Tyler Duncan's got the football. You're down seven. He has a great run uh, to extend the play with his legs. Big timer on a 25-plus yarder to move the chains into Langston territory. And then later on in that drive, you get a huge third down conversion to Dion Gilbert uh, out of nowhere, number 80. Uh, Dion G doing some great things, working out of the slot. Big third down conversion right there. Just your thoughts on the scramble by Tyler Duncan on that same drive and then that third down conversion. That was just tremendous. Well, it's just Tyler doing Tyler things, you know, and he, he did a, played a really solid game, really uh, locked in, didn't get us in any bad situations. And uh, Dion, um, he was clutch on that drive. He had two big catches. Mm -hmm. um, and the young man was, you know, thrown into the starting lineup, um, you know, freshman and, and he came up clutch, made some big, that was a big third down conversion, it was third and nine, and and a big catch, and then we, we, you know, we go in and score to tie the game. The ensuing play, inside, outside, double move, JC7, John Cole, talk about doing, uh, you know, Tyler Duncan things, JC7, NAIA All-American, rises to the occasion as he always does, beautifully thrown ball, we couldn't see it based on the camera work, mm -hmm. but uh, what a throw, what a catch. Uh, kick good by Lee Payne. You guys have a tie ball game here. Yeah, uh, it was a you know, it was a nice run. You talk about Tyler's run. Well, there, there's an example of him making a good check and uh, got got a coverage we liked. And and um, John's tough when he's one on one. I'm, you know, I don't like to live on fifty fifty balls, but when you're throwing to John, it's more <laughs> more like uh, seventy thirty for us. So we'll keep doing it. Absolutely. And then overtime, of course, Coach, you start off with a defensive offside, so you give them five yards, and then the defense holds them to a Hunter Elliott field goal, and then we saw what happened with, with Tyler. He gets the eight-yard run. Aiden gets a five-yard run. Then he throws the 12-yard touchdown to Jay Cole back in the back of the end zone. Just go through what happened in overtime. It was so so, so bang, bang, but eventually the uh, the, the odds went on, on the good guy side. You know, it's funny. I mean, people say, oh, yeah, you're saying this after the game's over. Um, as soon as I as soon as it was tied, I I knew we were going to win the game in overtime. Our guys, uh, we we've been working on over overtime scenarios for the last several weeks on the different phases of of the overtime. And after the coin flip uh, with the overtime stuff, which was kind of weird, they pulled the coaches out there to do it rather than the players. That was kind of weird. But then when I came back to the team, team I looked at them all on the sideline. I go, "What have we been doing for four weeks?" 
And then they all said, you know, overtime, and they went nuts, and they were just really locked in. Defense went out there, um, held them to a field goal. That's a stop in overtime. When you get the ball in the 25, your job is to hold them to a field goal. That's it. You know, uh, oh, well, we, we can't give up points. Hold them to a field goal, and that's a win. And our defense uh, held them scoreless in the last four series. So that was huge. Big time adjustment yeah. right there. Yes. So Coach Sewell and the guys did a, a nice job of what, what they were doing, and the guys were playing so hard. So they got the, held them to the field goal, and then actually the, the, the second play of the drive, it, uh, Tyler's a shoestring tackle away from going in for the score, and it's over right there. Uh, but, you know, we, we got the first down, and once again we, we had a play called, and they gave us a single on, on John's side, and, and we con- converted and dropped. It was the same thing we scored on in the, in the, in the, in the first half, you know, um, just converted to it and pitch and catch, and there it was. How they single John Cole, is, it, it, it blows my mind. I'm sure it blows your mind, Kevin and Coach. You're like, how do you not give double coverage or just, just roll guys over to number seven side? They, they just want to continue to test John Cole, and they get burned every time. It's a, I'm older than you guys, but like when I was a kid, like it's kind of, oh, I double dog dare you. <laughs> right. Like, okay, well, there you go. <laughs> Take it. And, um, you know, and then the celebration begins. That was only his 14th catch of the game, Coach, in the corner of the end zone. I, I want to go back to that throw. I thought the throw by Tyler Duncan arguably was the best throw of his career. It was an <laughs> incredible throw. Uh, it was it was it, it, it was picturesque. Great catch. I think T- Timmy Gosen said, "Hey, might have been a, a better catch." It was it was excellent execution, is what it was. It was clutch time. You talk about two dudes that possessed the clutch gene: JC Seven, Johnny Cole, and Tyler Duncan on that play right there, with all those guys up front making it happen. Uh, that was just fantastic. Yeah, I mean it. It was. It was. Uh, it was just a special play. And there were so many, I mean, we can go player after player. We talked about it all week, just the brotherhood and playing for each other. You know, um, Cole Davis goes down on the opening kickoff with the ACL, and, and Aiden Quinn steps up and has a huge game, um, you know, running and receiving, catch, catching the ball for touchdowns out of the backfield. You know, Sid, third play of the game, you know, takes a, a simple little play that we call hook and just – uh, Tyler, <clears throat> Tyler knifes it in there, and he turns it into a 58-yard touchdown. And then his block, if you go back and look at some of the big plays and the big runs that Aiden had, it's behind Sid's blocking. And mm-hmm. and the guys just played their butts off, you know. I couldn't be more proud of them. Coach, two things there. A uh, lot to unpack on that last little bit there. For one, uh, Cole Davis, ACL, you're, you're breaking my heart. I, we did not pick up on that. What's what's the update there for CD? Yeah, it was on the opening kickoff of the game. Oh, man, so he's yeah. out for the year? He, it wasn't even hit. He just pl- planted and it oh, went, went oh, and goodness. then he got hit. And Cole Davis, man, we're thinking um, of you. Had no idea. God bless you, Cole. Yeah. Lots of prayers out to you, brother. So we, we're, he'll get the, you know, we're getting it set up where he's going to get the, the surgery early next week and, We'll be able to have it done here with our our team doctors and stuff and um, Mm, get him back, get him rolling so he can get back next year and be ready to go at the start of the year. But, yeah, I mean, but, you know, that it stinks. It stinks, but it's football. Yep. And uh, Aiden played well, and the freshman, Maurice Rocket, is stepping into new roles on special teams and returns and and, uh, doing it in the backfield. So um, we don't have a shortage of running backs that are talented. We don't. We were boasting about that room last week on this very program. I, I got to get back to the Sid Turnbull Frazier touchdown. Uh, we, we mentioned it to to uh, uh, to Odell here when we, we walked into the building. Uh, that was a tone setting play. That was Kelsey esque, and he thumped that middle backer <laughs> in the middle of the field, and just uh, like he was a gnat, and then with the speed to the edge and just finished the play. That was just. On yeah. the road like that to, to punch them in the in the grill like that early on, I thought that was big, and it was about time to get Niner in the end zone. That was well, huge. it was it was huge because I mean they, uh, you know they they wanted us with the ball to start the game and and um, for uh, for us it's all, if we can start fast and, and it helps our defense and and our offense was uh, was rolling, but so to hit you know sit come up with the big play, big toss by Tyler and. You know, catch and run. John did a good job downfield, pinning the pinning the, the defensive back, so so Sid could get in and and uh, we're off and running. You know, we're a minute 
minute 30 into the game, and we're up 7 nothing, and, and we scored on seven of our 11 drives. So, uh, Impressive. I mean, if you're scoring on 67, <laughs> 67% of your possessions, I'll, I'll take that Absolutely. in any game. Yep. Coach, I know we've got to wrap this segment up, but defensively, I, I look at these numbers. Of 94 tackles, 65 were solo. That lets me know that these men were playing assignment football. They were playing, they were, they were playing excellent, outstanding defense. They, they were playing very disciplined. They played their assignments well. Does, does that really speak to you? When you, see, when you hear those numbers, do those numbers going to speak to you the same way? Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Langston's a quality football team. Guys, before the, we got into this league, they had won it five years in a row. You know, and then we've been battling them for, for uh, you know, seven seasons now. And, and you know, it's a, we've won four, they've won three, and they've always been tough games. And they're going to get theirs. But our defense did a, a really good job of, of holding them down. I think they're about 80 or 90 yards under their rushing average. And that's what they want to do. They want to they wanna hit you in the mouth. And, uh, you know, our guys came ready to play on the defensive side. It was, there was no backing down. We so, Tackling was, was good. I think they had one one what we call explosive run. Other than that, uh, our, our guys shut them down, and they had trouble moving moving the ball. i got to say one thing. Jacob Hernandez, the hit man, 13 more tackles for him. He led that defensive charge. Kevin, but, but 15. Jacob, okay, fair 15. enough, 14, 15. Who's counting? But i got to tell you, uh, he's got another Sooner Athletic Conference Player of the Week honor, too, and I think that's two or three yep. for, for the hit man. So uh, uh, keep the numbers rolling. Great defensive effort, uh, Coach, but uh, we're getting that word. Uh, short but sweet for you right here at the top of the broadcast. Get the guys we got to get uh, Jake Farrell over here and, uh, and Sid turnbull Fraser. Oh, They're going to join the set next right here. Straight ahead on the Storm Report. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Storm Report, Episode 7 for the 8th day of November on the 2021. I'm Kevin Derryberry. On the far end of the set, that is Ed Cole. And we have Sid turnbull Fraser joining us, the pride of H-Town. And, of course, <laughs> Jake Farrell out of Forest Ranch, California. And, uh, gentlemen, welcome to the program. It's a pleasure having you both. Man, thanks for having us. Good to be here, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, man. We got more radio voices. Ed Cole, the <laughs> chocolatey, yeah, velvety man. voice of mm -hmm. Odell right there. Sid Turnbull yeah, Fraser. Yeah. Sid, we were just talking with JB about the the tone-setting touchdown run. That's how this thing started on Saturday afternoon. And uh, you got free over the middle. You popped the defender in the middle as well. He was uh, now eating turf, and then you were on your way <laughs> to the end zone. Take us through the play and uh, what that meant to give your team a nice jump start on the road. Oh, man, just start off with the win. I mean, that thing, that thing was great. But going to the play, like, um, man, Tyler getting that ball to me right there, and I kind of turned, and I kind of saw the defender, so I wanted to cut under him. But it was funny because as soon as I got past him, I saw John in front of me, and I felt like I could feel someone behind me. So I was lit yelling at John. I was like, get him, get him, get him, get him. So he <laughs> ended up getting the block, which was a great block. And then, uh, you know, I just tried to get to the pylon, to the end zone as fast as I could. 
So it worked out. Yeah, and Sid, what did that mean to set the tone, as, as Kevin mentioned in the previ- previous segment with Coach Bowen, to start the tone, three-play, 82-yard drive, bam, you get that 54-yarder, we're up 7 nothing. Yeah, I mean, we just talk about, you know, uh, every week just starting fast, finishing strong. So being able to have that play early on, um, you know, kind of got everyone going and got the momentum going. So it, it felt nice, and then for the timing was, you know, even better. So it was good. Jake, let's take it through the defensive side for a moment. We're going to go back to last week because we have to talk about what you did last week, extra special performance there. But in this victory, uh, winning in overtime, uh, you had another solid game on that defensive line. Uh, how are you settling into your position? Another seven tackles, and uh, we obviously know you've got uh, some propensity to get to the quarterback as well. Uh, yeah, it's been good. You know, I just feel like I'm starting to get comfortable and uh, coaches – just putting their trust in me, and I'm just coming up when I can, you know, making plays whenever they come to me. How do you get the name, the number 42? Was that given to you? Was it issued? Is there a means behind that? 42 in the state of Arizona means a little bit more than in the great state 48 than it does anywhere else in the country. Why is that? Pat Tillman. Okay, okay. Uh, so my story isn't really going to compete with the the – title you know with pat tillman and that's stuff, okay but, uh, that, we're looking for your story okay Jake. Yeah. originally i i wanted the number 24 um but it was taken so uh coach harris just decided to flip it and give me 42 sweet okay yeah. there you go what was that dejan who's yeah, got dejan dejan mm-hmm. now that you couldn't work anything out with dejan to get nah, two four i didn't try you know, no, number, know numbers to me aren't that serious odell he said if he doesn't get nine he can't play so that's a no. different perspective right <laughs> no i'm just giving him the business but that's that's a great answer that question and give it to coach harris he's got the yeah, he's got yeah. a solution for everything yeah he fantastic. does fantastic for sure jake talk more about this defense and the scheming and the way that that coach Har- just everybody just coaches up and schemes for this defense to do what it did like it did against langston you guys are just relentless you guys go out there you're dogs you love playing with each other you love playing for each other i mean just against opsu just the week prior you had five and a half sacks you had another sack against langston so two weeks dude you've been killing it so talk about this defense and what and why it makes you so successful and why you're able to put up those kinds of numbers and be make that kind of an impact defensively uh, yeah, so really um, we just come in the week and, and scheme against what the offense is going to try to attack us with. And um, I feel like we've done a really good job of taking offenses out of their element and uh, kind of forcing them to be uncomfortable. And, you know, when, once that happens, it allows us to kind of play free and uh, just play fast. And I think you've seen that not only with my stats, but just stats across the defense. Like you talk about Jake Hernandez, 15 tackles. Like that's, that's a lot, Hit man. you know. Hit man. And, uh, Hit man. I think you just go down the list and you just see the, the outputs we're putting out and it's all credited to, um, you know, just making the offenses uncomfortable week in and week out. I got to stay on topic here. Defense, right? Yeah. Um, 42, getting after the quarterback. You mentioned it at five and a half sacks. It's a program record. Mm. We've never seen that before. I've seen some dudes on this on this gridiron here at ACU. Jerron Green comes to mind. Uh, he is the sack master on this school. But five and a half sacks in one game, some people would refer to that as being in the zone. Take us through that that experience for you. Could, could you relate to that, being in the zone? And it just seemed like every time that uh, they said, hut, hut, hike, you were in the backfield and you were getting after the quarterback. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's it's a good feeling, you know, when you get, like you said, in that zone. Um, you kind of just feel like you could do no wrong, really. And, uh, you know, just it, and it goes back to just playing free and, you know, getting the offenses uncomfortable, put you in that position and where you can just ball out. And, um, I mean, I feel like that's what I was doing. And I'm happy with where we were and we won. So that's the main main thing. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. And you also were the uh, Sooner Athletic Conference Player of the Week as well. And, uh Boy, a couple of your other teammates have done that same thing, so congratulations on that personal success going along with your team success. Sid, for you, speaking about a zone, the zone that you and you and Tyler have like on that 54-yarder and what you've done all season long, what's that relationship like with you and, and Tyler Duncan over the season? As uh, That's got to be a special relationship between a quarterback and a tight end or a quarterback by receiver running back between you, especially between you and him. Talk about that. Yeah, man, just – just Tyler, the guy he is off the field, man. He's just he's a good dude, man. And uh, you know, uh, went through a lot this past year, and um, and he's just grown so much since since I got here. And uh, just to see the player he is, man, the friendship that we have off the field, you know. But then on the field, man, you know, 
uh, uh, I'm a big target, and, and Tyler uh, likes giving me the ball, man, you know, and, and uh, having a guy like John that can take the top off the defense, you know, when, when Tyler needs to get balls out quick, he knows Ty, uh, John's going to bring him a lot, of, a lot of attention. You know, I'm there, to, and he'll, he'll get, find me to, you know, get the ball, find it to me. So, you know, working with Tyler is a great thing, man. He gets the ball where it needs to be and puts us in positions to win. So, You like that attention, don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite route in the route tree? My You're a favorite. big guy. And, and let's get this straightened out, too. We've talked about it off the field. We've had some fun with it, but the, the tight end or the wide yeah. receiver or the H back or, slot, or, whatever or the slot. It. What, yeah. how, when people ask you what position do you play uh, at the book signing or the autograph sessions, what, what do you say? I, I hit them with the tight end. I hit them with the tight okay. end. Okay, yeah, all right. Because yeah. that's what's going to sell at the next level, right? Right, 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 right. Exactly, exactly. I tell them I'm a little slow for receiver, but, uh, you know, I'll play tight end. So and so and, and what's your favorite route in the route tree? Man, I, I actually uh, – even though I don't get to run it a whole lot, my favorite route is actually the corner route. Um, I got to run one this past game against Langston. Uh, uh, didn't end up finding me on it. But I love running the corner route. I like fade routes, you know, and then, um, you know, out routes too. On the corner yeah. route, were you open? I think so. I'm always <laughs> open. I think I'm we always open. We know that. We know everybody on this team uh, is always open, open <laughs> including my guy Derek Anderson. Yeah. Everybody's open. But Coach yeah. says there's only one football to go around. Only one football, right. man. Yep. You right. only throw one. So, and we got a lot of guys to throw to. So. My last one for you, uh, uh, Mr. Turnbull Fraser. I'll keep wanting to call you Della, but uh, Odell. Odell. Um, the, the idea that, that you have taken a lot of pride in becoming a blocker and you've, yeah. you've really worked on that craft because – uh, as a tight end, it's not always the glory, right? It's not right. always a Kelsey kind of game. Right. He's a heck of a blocker, too, and there's other ones that, that are like that. So you also, you're a great receiver, and you can make plays, but you also take a lot of pride in your game on, on being a, a, a great blocker on this team. Yeah, man, I just, I don't know any other way to put it, but, you know, when I go out there, you know, guys on the team, like, you know, I, I, I want to hurt them, not in a bad way, but I want to put guys down. You know, I want to give lanes for my running backs. I want, you know, I want to set tones. I want to let guys know that, hey, the game of football is violent, you know. So between this whistle, I'm gonna do whatever it needs to be done to get to get my job done. Mm -hmm. And you know, blocking has become something that I enjoy doing. You know, it's it's a good feeling putting someone on the ground or, or looking up and knowing that your block, you know, put Aiden or Cole or York into the end zone. You know, John, just like that block John had for me on my run. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you know, when you when you have a team like you do, blocking becomes more than just that. It becomes all right. This is an opportunity. For not only for me to showcase what I can do, but to get somebody else some work in. So it's selfless, right? It's part of what yes. Jeff Bone has in this culture here with this football program. Everybody uh, plays for the guy next to him, mm -hmm. and, that, and that's what I was texting with Jake earlier today with Hitman. That's what he said. I play for the brother next to me. It's, it's not about me getting the 15 tackles. It's just me playing for my brother to my right, to my to my right, to my left. In front of me, behind me. That's what it's all about. And, and Jake, for you, what's it like going up against this brother and the rest of this offense in practice as you get ready for these games? It, it's it's got to be something to go against such a top flight offense like this in practice to get you ready for the real thing. Oh, for sure. And, uh, you know, we played a good quarterback over at Langston that can move and, you know, going against Tyler every day, like he, he's kind of deceptive in his speed, but he can move too. And, and I feel like it helped yes. us be ready. You know, just facing a quarterback that likes to run. Um, I felt like we did a pretty good job containing him, and I think that's credited to who we face day in and day out. My last one uh, for the fellas, uh, same question for both of you. Uh, we'll start off with you, Sid, first. Uh, you mentioned uh, that you have a strong bond with quarterback Tyler Duncan, and you have a good relationship with him. Uh, what are some of the things that you guys do for fun off the field? I mean, you know, we, we get into, you know, a lot of things on campus, like just seeing each other uh, here and there, like, you know, on campus, like talking, you know, it's not always football, but, you know, other stuff that we do, like, you know, just hanging out, you know, going out on the weekends whenever we have time, stuff like that. You know, I'm, I spend a lot of time, uh, uh, you know, kind of, kind of at home on the weekends here recently. So a lot of off the field stuff, I've been on my own a little bit, but, you know, whenever we come in for events and things like that, we always, you know, have a good time talking and things like that. You guys gaming or what are you doing? Yeah, we <laughs> – hey, we get on the Call of Duty for real. We okay. do that for real. Oh, you yeah. play Vanguard? Let's nah, shoot. we ain't got Vanguard. We, yeah, we on the, uh, the war zone. Oh, but, war zone. Yeah. Okay, war zone. Yeah. Let's shoot them ups, man. I can't yeah. get – I do a Tom Clancy. I get in there and I get my, 
My you nose the, blown off before I can even get into the pool room. So you, you know? do Rainbow Six? Is that what you <laughs> no, do? I, I don't do any of them. Okay. I, I try to do Madden. and I'm I, I try to do Modern Warfare. It doesn't work for me. We yeah. found out last week I'm, I'm playing on the wrong level with Madden, remember? So I, I'm, not, I'm out there either way. Jake, my last one for you. If you would, just elaborate on the, on the chemistry that you have with your teammates, a Marty Rodriguez and a, and a Mo Powell, and, and just what's it like blending in with those kind of guys as, as you're the new guy, but you came in and you, you've been an impact guy too. Yeah, it's been good. You know, uh, I feel like we've all built a, built a pretty good trust and um, just camaraderie between each other, and I think it's credited to, like you said, the culture that's just been built here and, and the brotherhood aspect. And a lot of those guys kind of took me under their wing and, and allowed me to just be the player that I am and, and kind of play my game next to them and be a part of their game. And um, I think it's just allowed us all to be free and, and play fast and physical. We wouldn't want to have it any other way. Two more class athletes here for Jeff Bowen's football program, Sid Odell turnbull Frazier, and then, of course, we've got our Sid turnbull Frazier, if you will. I always want to put an Odell in there. Odell Beckham is, uh, is blasting us with the news right now, so forgive me on He needs that. to go to Oakland. Um, I, I think uh, the IFL would be perfect for Odell, <laughs> but that's another thing. And, of course, uh, Jake Farrell, our guest here on the program. When we come back, we'll wrap things up. A little preview with Wayland Baptist with the head coach, Jeff Bowen, right after this. Welcome back to the Storm Report, episode number nine on the eighth day of November 2021. That's the head coach, Jeff Bone, of the 21st-ranked team in the country after a 40-37 to victory over Langston. Coach, you're now 7-2 and two overall, 6-2 and two in the Sooner Athletic Conference. And now we get senior night. We get a date with uh, Wayland Baptist kickoff at 11 o'clock at Firestorm Field. No better way than to finish out the season with Wayland, and uh, you get a chance to finish out the string going undefeated at home. You could be 5 out with a win. Yeah, it's always nice to, to, you know, defend the home turf, and that's something we take great pride in. And, you know, we've been on this campus now for for uh, two seasons, and if we win this one, we'll be, uh, you know, well, I think we're 9-1 and one on our home field. So This is interesting. Uh, you played Wayland Baptist the first time you played them. They beat you. And then the next seven times you've taken care of business. Mm-hmm. This will be the ninth uh, tilt with these guys. So there's a lot of history there. Yeah. Uh, our first year we first year we opened, we were independent. So we, we they were uh, one of our, our games uh, that we traveled to all over the country. We actually had them here and lost 28-21. I remember that game. And um, the next year we went into a league with them, and we haven't lost to them since. So hopefully we can keep that streak alive. Interesting. I'm inter- oh, sorry, Kevin. No, I just had no doubt about it. <laughs> Let's keep that streak alive, baby. Yeah. yeah. Interesting with the scheduling. Last year, you ended the season sack play in Plainview, Texas, against them. You went up 42 nothing, won 42 seven. This year, you ended at home, of course, on senior on senior day. That's going to be pretty special. But I would imagine doing what you did last season, getting out to a, a fast start, getting 
I mean, putting the pedal to the metal, that, that'd be the key to victory on, on Saturday, one of the keys to victory. Well, well there's no, I don't think there's a team in America that doesn't want to start fast. So, um, and that's what we like to do. I mean, we're, a, we're you know, high-octane offense that wants to roll fast, and, and we're going to look to do that again and, and uh, hopefully get on them early and, and uh, make, it a, make it a great game 10 and, and senior day and, and uh, get a win and then see where the chips fall. I like the idea that you beat Langston two times in a row now, Coach. That's uh, that's a good feeling, too. Love beating Langston. Um, you know, since uh, we came into the league, it, it was their league until we got here. And, and uh, you know, to be four and three against them. And and uh, we've won a couple conference titles, and so have they and, and stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's it's a really good feeling beating that. I can talk about beating Langston all day long. <laughs> we, we've uh, talked about uh, just about every phase of, of this week's win. It was just a thrilling come from behind win. Uh, Abel Olipe just thrust into uh, immediate you know, duty where it's just uh, they're, we're throwing a lot at him, and he's been able to respond. I, I, I don't know that we touched on it early on, but I thought the drive at the end of regulation, just to put yourself in that position to have a 49-yard field goal at the end with a shot, uh, it was a little bit short on the field goal, but just, again, uh, Tyler Duncan put his team uh, in a chance. Uh, you gave yourself a chance to win at the very end, and that's yeah. all you can ask for. Yeah, the defense got a stop, and uh, we hit a couple – you know, we were – um, we had a couple timeouts, so we felt if we could hit something quick that we would try to, you know, get the get in field goal range. If not, we were just going to bleed out the clock and head to overtime. Um, then we got to, you know, the 49-yard distance, and and he was uh, warm-ups, he was good from 55, mm-hmm. but this was into the wind, uh, got a good strong headwind, and, um, you know, came up a little short. But he's he's been clutch for us since yes. he's taken over for mm-hmm. Manny. I mean, he was... Made all his extra points again, two for three on field goals this week, and uh, quality kickoffs, putting the ball where we want it, and he's he's done a nice job. And he shows you he could punt too if need be yep. too. So yeah, uh, he was thrown into duty against uh, uh, OPSU and was a uh, you know player of the week uh, on special teams. So um, yeah, he's he's. He's been clutch. And it's got another question, but I want to mention to Nestor Hergera, we know that you're, you're scheduled for surgery. We're thinking about you. We're praying for you. And, uh, well, look, oh, maybe give, you got give a report. He actually, uh, they moved up the surgery. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, he had it. Everything was positive. Oh, Sur- awesome. Surgery w- went real well. And uh, he'll, be, he'll be back uh, thumping footballs here before you know it and okay. be ready to go for next year. 9-7. Good. Fantastic yeah. for Nestor Hergera, Ed. Yeah. So, Coach, I'm looking. It says fumbles, Arizona Christian, none. Out of 22 rushes, no fumbles. So being able to take care of the ball, that, I'm sure that was that was a, of utmost importance to you on Saturday, and, and it will be of utmost importance in a few days when Wayland Baptist gets here. And every drive and a kick. Um, and we talk to the guys about it all the time. Control the ball. End every drive with a kick. There's nothing wrong with punting the football as long as you're sw- flipping the flipping the field on, on your opponent, and that's good, or extra points or field goals. Just don't turn the ball over. Um, and we, we had one turnover. Uh, they had one, so we, we that balanced out. But I thought we did a good job of protecting the football and just doing the little things, keeping drives alive. And uh, I tell you, it doesn't get much better than, than that. It was a, it was one of the top five in, in my coaching careers, just, just as far as just the way the guys played and stuck together and uh, – you know, find a way to win a game against a tough opponent on the road. Coach, it's senior night at home. It'll be senior afternoon, if you will. Uh, we'll have a lot of uh, uh, pageantry for that. But for you, and how do you approach senior day, and, and what will this be like for you? You've been to a bunch of them. You've been a part of a lot of them. Uh, what does this one uh, mean to you? Uh, they're all bittersweet, you know. They're, um, I'm excited uh, to see the next chapter in their, their lives. And um, we, we, we know that football always ends. <laughs> you know, all of us, uh, none of us are still playing <laughs> that are older. And for these young guns, um, you know, for most of them, it's going to come to an end. Um, at the end of this season, for those seniors, there may be a few that are able to chase the dream, and, and we'll help them do that. But mm-hmm. um, just seeing their growth as young men, you know, we talk about faith, family, future football, and to watch them grow in their faith and get their degree and um, and watch them, you know, finish out the football season and then later on watch them walk across that stage and and get the diploma those uh those are those are special moments for me and then then the relationships you have with them afterwards it's uh it's special 
It is really great just to see how you can help mature a young man, as you mentioned, to see him grow from day one until the day he walks away. And as you mentioned, becomes a young man and just continue, continues on in his life. And you know you had a small part in that. That's, um, that's the best part of it. I mean, I, I love winning football games, and, and that's what I'm here to do. But, uh, you know, I've been in this 34 years, and uh, it's nothing better than watching young men uh, – excel at life not just at football because you're going to play for 40 year four years and then you got the next 40 or 50 afterwards so um it's neat to watch them uh, mature and, and grow through the process i'm sure that uh, some of your assistant coaches would uh would believe and think the exact same way coach and mm-hmm. that uh, to see those guys walk across the stage and get a diploma or get that degree um, that that's got to be worth a lot right there. I mean, that's, that's, worth that's, it all. that's part of the process. And so that's very, very rewarding. My last one for you. I just wanted to point this out. Tyler Duncan, 5,111 yards before the LU game with a 326 yard passing performance. Tyler Duncan now has 5,437 total yards passing in his career. That's number one. And uh, I know he would tell you if he was here right now, he couldn't do it without <laughs> guys like Johnny Cole and those fellows up front and, uh, you know, great coaches and, and people that have put him in place and I'm sure his parents and whatnot. But Tyler Duncan's the all-time leading passer here, and uh, he's got, he still has some work to do as well. Well, Tyler's a special young man, and, and um, you know, he had a rough game last week, probably one of his roughest, and to bounce back, on the road. Like he did on the road against a, a ranked opponent and just lead our team. Um, he's a special young man, and we've had some really, really good quarterbacks in you a sh- mm-hmm. short amount of time here at ACU. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll go to battle with any of them that have played for us, but right now it's it's Tyler's time, and he's making the most of it. And I'm extremely proud of uh, where he takes his game and how much work he puts into it. i got to say the last thing. Uh, we saw the, our last home game. Everybody had walked off the field. And the franchise, in this case, the quarterback, Tyler Duncan, is still behind everybody picking up uh, Gatorade jugs and water bottles. And he's just picking up all the debris <laughs> left behind by the club. And, and I just thought, here again, here's another incredible human being, a selfless leader, that understands all the nuances of being the guy at the position. You're just thinking, here again, another warm, fuzzy kind of real-life people story. Mm -hmm. This guy's the real deal. Well, I mean, what he went through last year is all well-documented with the the passing of his his father and then break, uh, you know, missing most of the season with uh, the clavicle and stuff and to bounce back and and have the season he's having this year – and being the the young man he is, uh, growing through the process of of uh, being the man of the house and and those kind of things, um, he's come so, so far and he's matured so much. And it, I'm just really proud of him. I know his family's proud of him, and mm-hmm. and uh, you know he's a big part of what we do. And uh, and um, I'm glad we'll have him back next year too. No doubt about it. Congratulations to our very own Tyler Duncan, the all-time leading passer and yardage for ACU. Ed, that's it for me. Another great show. What do you have left over for Mr. Bowen here? Hey, Coach, congratulations. Let's get Wayland Baptist on Saturday and see what happens after that. Yeah, let's, uh, season, let's do it. Let's get this thing to 8-2 and two and take care of Baptist. And there's, hey, there's about 22 teams in the country that have anything to play for this weekend, and we're one of them. So um, if you're in game 10 and you're still playing for something, that's a good thing in NAI football because it's a small, small number that, that actually get to keep keep playing so we're in the mix no doubt about it that's going to wrap up the storm report for episode number nine for all of our guests here for jake farrell and sid turnbull frazier the head coach jeff bowen for robert nielsen and our technical producer mr tim gosen for ed cole i'm kevin derryberry until next time so long for now roll storm roll storm roll storm